they were they were a lot they were farmers and she, she was growing like from a young age large quantities of vegetables and that was sort of her background my dad he went to you know to live on that property and he was just on his own you know traveling uh, in the wild and sort of living off the land without necessarily producing large quantities of food and I think when he met my mom they started you know growing gardens and uh, bringing sort of a bit of the farming aspect right. um, a little bit more anyways because my dad had already started but um, my, my mom had a, a large background in that um, and then yeah when I was a child we were growing like we had an acre of gardens uh, so it was like a very an acre of gardens uh, a, an acre of garden yeah, holy shit was, oh, wow. well, that's we were, a big garden that was a huge garden we, <laughs> were, we were three brothers right three boys plus my parents uh, yeah because i know I, guillaume and, and i never i never met your older brother my older brother nick so nicola um he's in mexico now which you know i think you should talk to him because after he left uh my parents he traveled uh, all over the world hitchhiking all over the world so i i don't know how many countries he hitchhikes uh he hitchhiked in but he has a, a lot of interesting stories um yeah he speaks like eight or nine languages, uh, most Crazy. of them very fluently as well, huh. and some of them at an expert level. Like, s his Spanish is just, like, you know, absolutely incredible. You know, it's like he's he's been in Mexico his entire life. I think he's still spent, like, six or seven years in Mexico, so it's, it's a lot, but he has a gift for languages. So, you know, it, and I, apparently more you learn, once you once you get past, like, five or six, It's there's a lot of things that Similarities are working together. And yeah, and then... He's he's worked a lot over the years at developing his accents, uh, which is another part of language. You may speak the language perfectly, but if your accent is off, people may not understand you where you yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, so he's very good with like um, sort of changing his accents in Mexico. He lives huh. in Mexico, and he's like he can change the accent depending on the region he's in. It's oh, very wow. very interesting. It's like he's an expert at languages. Uh, he would be so interesting to have on the podcast. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's Nick, and then you know Guillaume. <laughs> Uh, Guillaume, who's who's in Ottawa as well. Um, so yeah, we, yeah, worked we were together. Guillaume, uh, Guillaume, uh, this is the this is one of the funniest story. Remember when I locked myself out from my apartment? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I locked myself out. It was in the winter time, and I locked myself out in the of the apartment. And um, mm -hmm. back then we had the paint the painting business, so we had like ladders and shit like that, right? And I knew my um, it was on the third floor of my apartment buildings. And I knew that um, my uh, patio door was unlocked because I never locked it because it was on the, on the, uh, because it was on the third floor. So I called Guillaume. I was like, because <laughs> he was living the closest, and I was like, "Hey, do you have uh, do you have a ladder I could borrow?" I locked myself out. So I went with no phone, no wallet. Uh, oh no, I had my phone, but no keys, no wallet, no nothing. So <laughs> so I walked to his house like two, three kilometers or something like that, and then we and then he got the uh, we came back and then. I went on up the ladder and then just <laughs> unlocked. <laughs> That's how we did things back in the day, you know. You gotta just do whatever it takes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah I know Guillaume. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So three three brothers. Uh, we ate a lot of food. We ate a lot. Like you when, know, when we were growing, like in so high school, said, I was. You said earlier that you you were you had food for years. Maybe can I have um, uh, the other Celsius? I, I um, don't. It's not necessarily that you can necessarily. <laughs> Eat how did only you? How did you uh, yeah. uh, conserve the food? How does that? How does that work? So, so canning, um, canning is a is a you know. So you can can and like I, I I'm eating. You know, I still eat my parents' cans because they're so yeah. good. You know, they have very good recipes and yeah. Um, some of them you you can keep them for five ten years. I'm eating stuff from. Man, I don't like. Yeah, I think I'm eating stuff from 2012 right now. <laughs> you know, like tomato so sauces cool. and stuff like that. Uh, it stays like at a certain point in time, uh, the can can lose its, uh, you know, its seal or whatever. And, um, as, but as long as it's sealed, um, so there's like a negative pressure essentially, um, it'll be good forever. So if you, so really it's like what happens. It's going to be good like, forever. Not necessarily forever, but you're. As you, long as the seal, you know, as the seal doesn't, doesn't yeah, unseal. So, so you know. Can you give an example of like a, an exact type of food that you, like what is the process to make sure that it's. Sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so okay. usually, you know, the general process is that you want to use mason jars, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So glass containers and yeah. you have these, um, these little lids that go on top. Uh, yeah. They just sit on top. They're flat. And the edge of it is like sort of a, in a rubber material. Um, and uh, you want to basically heat the uh, whatever is inside the container. 
Uh, so, you know, it takes, it creates pressure, super basically. Hot. Super hot. And then you have these things that you, you, you sort of like, you know, have the mason jars with the small lid and the one that you roll on top that holds it there. Um, so you basically put that in a water container that's boiling. And as, it, at, as pressure sort of like uh, builds up, these little bubbles of air will come out of the lid uh, because the, you don't put it tight uh, mm-hmm. on it. Um, and then when it cools down, it's sort of like it cools down and it retracts, right, in, in terms of pressure or whatever, uh, and it seals up. Mm. And you hear them. They do like pop. It's like the, the container went like okay. sealed up. And it's, that's like when you buy like cans. Um, and you, you hear that pop noise, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you hear Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's the same concept, right? Uh, so you can can like, you know. My grandmother was, ma- was doing that too. Yeah, yeah. And I... Dale knows how to do it. I, I've done some like uh, salsas a couple of years ago yeah. with Dale, and you know it's it's a very fun process. But we did it, uh, you know, sort of a, as a system, as part of the system, right? You, you're producing food; you have to keep it. Uh, hmm. So you can can like meat. You know, we would can meat for sandwiches. It's the same. You know, you can can you can buy canned tuna. We would can fish, right? Uh, so it's very you can can pretty much everything, and it stays good forever. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a conserving food, you know, is, is sort of a skill that's been lost. And, you know, transforming from, uh, from having veggies into the ground, having meat come in. So a lot of people, you know, they'll grow a little garden, they'll eat a fresh veggie here and there, and they're like, oh, I'm growing some food. But that's one thing. But then to grow food and sort of, uh, you know, conserve the food for years and transform it in a way that can, you know, we, we dried stuff as well. You can keep dried, you know, uh, dried things for years. Um, so there's a lot that can be done. How did uh, you dry the, the things? How, do, how, how did you dry that? So uh, we had a drying rack. Um, so to dry, you know, and you can buy, like now I have an electric dryer, which is interesting. So I can dry, like I'll, sometimes I'll grow some yeah. oregano or, you know, some, some spices in my garden in the summer and I'll dry them in my um, sort of electric dryer, which has a heating uh, unit at the bottom. And then it's all these small little racks with, mm. uh, that allows the sort of air to go up. Um, and you just spread a few things on there, and it takes, you know, 24 hours, whatever. We had a wood stove, um, a cooking wood stove, flat top, right? Okay. Um, that's, you know, usually very wide. You can use it to cook. You have an oven on it. So we had one of these old wood stoves, um, and uh, we had a place above it that we could hang uh, this hanger, uh, this, uh, this dryer, sorry. And it was just this box that had different racks in it um, with this sort of mesh. Okay. And uh, you just spread some whatever you want on it. You can dry onions, you can dry peas, you can huh. dry all sorts of stuff. So you could dry, like, let's say, a mix of uh, vegetables, right? And when it dries, it takes, like, no room at all. It, it dries and it, like, it becomes a small little thing. Huh. You can dry celery, carrots, all sorts of veggies, and then you put them in a mason jar. You don't boil them or anything. You just put them there so it, it stays, like, sealed, if you will. Um, you take that out a year, two years, whatever, later, you boil it in a soup, let's say, right, or in whatever you want, in a spaghetti sauce or whatever you want. It takes a lot of water, right, but it, it comes back to, to almost... reabsorb the, wa- the yeah, water. Yeah, it comes back to the same size. No way. Yeah, and it keeps... You huh. keep all of the vitamins. You're not cooking it until that point, so it's still the first time it's been cooked, right, which is huh. very crazy, right? Um, so... It, it's very very different uh wow. you know what i what i what i learned as a as a kid <laughs> yeah it's it's uh huh. yeah yeah that's fascinating because i know we we waste a lot of food uh in the u.s so this is something that yeah well in canada as well right yes. i think just the the way that um we've been you know i think that the way that that the system works right now um you know most people they eat their food and they don't really know where it comes from yeah. right they have no idea what the process to bring the food to the plate was. So, therefore, it's just an exchange of money for food and, you know, whatever don't you care. don't eat, you don't care and you waste. But there's no value brought in the food because you have unlimited amount of food. Let me tell you, if food stopped coming in, you know, <laughs> it would be sort of this, you know, you don't think about that. And I don't think it's ever going to happen. We have a lot of food production um, capability, uh, you know, for, for – but takes a lot of food to feed we get 8 attacked. billion people, right? <laughs> could happen. Fair, fair. But generally speaking, right, we're, we're good. You know, if something ever happened where people need to figure <coughs> out, uh, you know, how to produce their own food, you know, it, it would be very difficult. Um, 
but I'm glad that I, I would be fine. Yeah, um, that's, why, that's, why, that's why I want, I want us to start hunting. <laughs> it, it's, you know what? It's, it's a very good, like, people don't think about it like that, but I think it's a very good skill to have. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very good thing. Just in case. It, well, it's not just a, a just in case. It's, it's also for you to appreciate more uh, what's in front of you when you actually have Oh, yeah, food. and also the, the, the meat is so much better. Yep, all of the food is like so much the, better. Like the, yep. like... Uh, like moose or deer yeah. is so much better. Yeah, yeah. Wild game, definitely. Oh. Um, even even farmed animals that have been, you know, that have been sort of raised naturally on a farm is also so much yeah. better. I drank goat milk as a child. <laughs> it was the best thing ever. You know, I do sometimes buy goat milk at the grocery. Unpastured goat milk? Oh, the, the, <laughs> the goat milk I was, I was drinking was straight up goat milk. We Rock. filtered it with just a, a little, what do you call those little filters, just for, huh. f just to pick up any dirt or anything in it, right? right? But it didn't remove any Straight component. from the Not necessarily like Not that, exactly. you know? You want to keep, you know, you got to keep it clean. Uh, uh, okay. You know, those, are, they're almost rubbing on the ground and, you know, they're sort of like, yeah, cleanliness is actually in the food production. It's actually sort of the first rule. Like you keep yeah, you clean. don't want to get sick off the oh, food yeah. that you're growing yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever you're yeah. cultivating. So you so you, how does how does that work? You, cl you clean it and then you clean it and then before you start you have to squeeze and and yeah, squeeze you have and to go down right. So you have to squeeze between right like yeah. between your thumb and your your uh, your palm and go down like and this. then you you basically sort of like it's like you got to squeeze. Oh, you're massaging. Here with the I've seen you're this massaging. in video. Yeah, I haven't yeah. done it yet, but I've seen it in yeah. video. It's it's very so meal kit. And yeah, and there's shit. There's white things that come out. There's, there's milk, basically. <laughs> you milk it, and it goes in the bucket or in the, in the container. Uh, and then you filter that. And, uh, yeah, we, we, we actually made our own cheese. Uh, we made oh, our nice. own yogurt. Um, oh, really? Yeah. How do yeah. you make cheese? Uh, that that was like remember? my – I remember. So, basically, you sort of boil the milk at a certain temperature. Uh, you add some um, – had something in it i forget what it is i'm guessing you were not assigned to making the cheese i, I no i wasn't assigned okay. to making the cheese yeah um but you then, saw some of yeah them exactly assigned. it's okay. basically you add like almost like a bacteria or something in it that, yeah, that makes it like maybe, exactly like it's like a something like that it, yeah i forget what it is it has huh. a name it comes in a little bottle you got to keep it in the mm -hmm. fridge um and then you, you put that in it and you boil at a certain temperature then after that, it starts like creating like chunks essentially in it, okay. and the water separates uh, from the milk, hmm. and um, then you put it in a sort of a strainer. So you have these like clots essentially that will prevent the the, the actual uh, you know sort of particles to get out, but the water can can come out of it. And then we have this press, and you essentially press this like inside a container with a bunch of small holes in, wrapped into a clot. You press down, and then the liquids would come out, and then you tie the press, and you keep it, and eventually, a couple hours later, you press more, and you continue that process for a little while, sometimes like over the whole day. Okay. And uh, and then when you took it out, it was this chunk of cheese. It wasn't cheese like, it didn't look and feel like cheese like you have like uh, you know mozzarella cheese or whatever yep. like you have in the in the store. <coughs> Uh, it was a little, you know, a little bit more brittle. It was still hold itself, but you know, it wasn't. It wouldn't melt as well. But it was very good, very, very good, very tasty. Huh. Um, different than the taste of what you know, what you would taste, you know, in cheese at the. Didn't grocery taste store. like a cheddar cheese or whatever. No, no, no. It it's hard to describe the taste, but it's it's very, very good. Well, I guess it depends yeah. how you make it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. the, sure. I don't know nothing about making cheese. That could yeah. be interesting. No, I was, to I was have reading uh, about like using they use a bacteria to yeah, get bacteria. lactic acid. Yeah. Um, yeah. To help to get it to curd. Huh. Exactly. It's yeah, like it, like it starts like clots. Oh, that's why. Uh, creating, that, that's you know, why the le fromage the, en the crotte, curds. It's yeah. The curds. Yeah. Yeah. The the, nice. the poutine uh, cheese curds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. Those are like the the these are so good. The leftovers, <laughs> oh, right? Are. Oh, they're good. I oh, love them. I can't yeah. have those at home. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You don't have those in Florida, but uh, no. yeah, it's something else. When you go to Canada, you gotta <laughs> no, have we, a poutine. We, you made uh, me try some when we were up there. Oh, you went. Okay. Yeah. 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 She went for Christmas last year. Yeah. Yeah, I love my poutine once in a while. It's, it's like, good. yeah, 